Welcome to part one of this mini-series dealing with the subject of composite shots. For those unfamiliar with composite shots, a brief description is in order. Wikipedia describes compositing as the process or technique of combining visual elements from separate sources into single images, often to create the illusion that all of those elements are part of the same scene. In video editing, a number of single media events can be combined together in various ways to produce one resultant media event. In hit films specifically, these single media events are referred to as layers, and the resultant media event is referred to as a composite shot. There are six types of layers. These are called plain, text, grade, camera, light and point. In this tutorial I am just going to deal with the text layer. In episode 4 I mentioned composite shots when I demonstrated how to use one of the installed lower third templates. In this episode I want to show you how to create your own custom lower third template. I'll make a start by creating a composite shot. To do this, I go to the media panel and select New, then Composite Shot. I'm then prompted to set the composite shot's properties. I want this lower third to be the same as the simple animated lower third I created in episode 4. I'll therefore change the name to Lower Third Fly In Fly Out. As I want the length to be 6 seconds, I'll change that also. This adds another panel to the container, where I can build up my composite shot by adding various layers. As I mentioned earlier, I'll only be creating a text layer for the lower third template. I do this by clicking the new layer icon and selecting text. I can now enter my text string. The text string's attributes can then be modified by opening the text panel. With the text modified, I can now proceed with the animation. I'm not going to describe this procedure, because it's the same as the one I described in episode 4. Refer to that if necessary.
You'll notice that I had to place the last keyframe at 5 seconds 24 frames. Because the event is 6 seconds long, the playhead must be set at the frame boundary before that. I now need to make sure that the text string is set as a variable. I mentioned this in episode 4. This ensures that when the template is imported and placed on the timeline, the text string can be modified. In HitFilm, this is called publishing. To publish the text layer, I right click on it and select publish. This attaches a megaphone icon on the text entry, signifying that it's been published. On completion, the composite shot panel is closed down. As in episode 4, to use the template, I simply pull it onto the timeline at a convenient position. After caching, I'll play the clip. When you're happy with the template design, you can save it to your hard drive. To do this, right click the composite shot entry in the media panel and select Save As. This opens up a dialog box where you can choose the save location. You can also specify an image file to use as a thumbnail to replace the default thumbnail in the media panel. I have an image file I created which I'll use as a thumbnail. Any published properties will also be displayed. An important point to note, the custom template won't immediately be available in the template list. To force the template into the template list, you must first delete the template from the media panel, then import it back in using the import button. It will then be available in the template list. Now to customise the lower third. I described how to do this in episode 4.
There's a limit to how much a template can be customised without delving into keyframe manipulation. For instance, in this simple example, the text string needs to be reasonably short. If it's much longer than the default string length, it won't fully move into view. Also, if you reduce the duration, you will destroy all or part of the outro animation. Finally, if you need to remove a template from the template list, right click on the entry and select Uninstall. Be careful with this. There's nothing to prevent you from uninstalling non-custom templates. Templates are very useful when projects require numerous lower thirds. Each occurrence on the timeline can have different text strings. These different text strings can have different attributes such as colour, font, font size, etc. Join me for part 2 where I'll explain how to change the length of a template and how to manipulate the keyframes to take account of that change. I'll also describe how to modify the keyframes of a lower third to compensate for a change in text string length. If you found this tutorial useful, please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. I also welcome any comments you may have. Until the next time, bye for now.